it's a level of immersion that we really focus on. Uh, you're not just playing a game, but you're living in this in this world, in this universe. It's uh, a giant open world for the player to do what they want. You feel like you've had an impact in the world. You really feel like you're there. There are certain you know types of entertainment where you're just experiencing it. You're taking in what the creator wants you to see, and they, you know they draw that dotted line between this happens, go here, do this. The more that we can put you in the situation where you're going to decide. That's what makes video games the best form of entertainment that they are. We don't just make RPGs, like we make simulations, and that leads to a lot of just crazy stuff that can happen and things you don't expect. Yeah, we always have those big fights, like, what if a what if combat breaks out right now, right? You have to handle that, right? Because it could, you, you can't control it. The only thing you control is that, that the game has to account for it somehow. We embrace the chaos, let it play out, and usually it's pretty fun. A lot of us have been doing this for a long time together, and it's nice with Starfield to go back to some things we didn't do, the backgrounds, the traits, the defining your character, all of those stats. Um, and I think there's so many games now that do those things that people are ready for something that, that does a lot of the things that, you know, older hardcore RPGs, some that we used to do, doing those again in, in a new way. We've always allowed the player to, you know, to create really interesting, unique characters. This game, we've definitely severely leveled up. The tech is based on scanning of real world models, similar to the photogrammetry we do in our landscapes. We're kind of applying the same thing to our to our people as well, because it's not just the appearance of your player and all that, but you know, we want all the personal interactions of NPCs, other characters in the game to be as impactful as possible. And for that, you have to believe these are real people. You're a real person interacting with real people. One of the big choices is which part of the game world am I going to engage in? We always uh, make a bunch of different groups that represent some of the major factions in every game. And in this one, we've got the United Colonies that represents the future Space Republic idealized. You also have the Free Star Collective, which is the Space Western fantasy. People that are out there on the frontier. We've got Reugen Industries, which represents corporate life. I think it has one of the best starts of, of any of the factions yeah, we've it's, done. It's a, a mega corp and you have to, you get hired, right? Like, yeah, do really. do, right. We'll apply for our job. We'll right. see if you cut, cut the mustard. Right. Yeah, I love approaching it that way where, okay, what makes the world feel whole? What are the groups that would make it feel whole and believable? And then how does the player interact with them? You know, what we're doing with the, the pirates, the Crimson Fleet as well. They're not just this foe. Let the player join them. What does that mean? The cool thing about Crimson Fleet, you know, what if you're a good person and you want to be a good player and you don't want to play as a bad guy, you can side with the pirates or you can report back your superiors and be like basically space cop type of thing. So it lets you be a good person and still play with the bad guys. I think that's really cool too. It seems like no matter what story we write, the one the players tell themselves is the one that they think about and love the most and the companions. Hello, Captain. How may I be of assistance? So something we really, you know, leaned into on this game, how those other characters felt about you. That's probably my favorite part. Like when you're exploring and then your companion makes some comment off the cuff about something that you're checking out or something that just happened. It just feels so perfect for immersion. It's so believable. You think it's, it's a real person. So, you know, we knew we wanted to do some kind of persuasion mini game thing. Yeah, we sat down and it was funny. We didn't start with, let's do an evolution of, let's look back at the, the old Oblivion system, but there are a couple of uh, beats there. You have to think about what's my risk here, right? Which one do I want to choose? We didn't want it to be a system where there was definitely the right thing to say. It feels like you're having a conversation where you're actually trying to persuade somebody of something. Um, so it's actually, I think it's, as far as new systems in dialogue, I think it's, it's definitely one of the most successful ones that we've had. Yeah. I think when we knew we were making a game about space, you ask yourself certain questions, and that question is, what is out there? And so, as a game, we have romance, adventure, mystery, but I think with Starfield, there's this other layer of, you know, the cosmos and the universe and what is out there. At the end of it, we want the players to have told their own journey 
but then look back at it and we're asking the big questions. Why are we all here? Where is it leading? And what's next for humanity? <laughs>